Recently, my videos covering FDM printed miniatures have been gaining a lot of attention, and rightfully, people have been wanting to see more. Asking what they look like primed and painted, what my print settings are, how I go about supporting these models for FDM printing. All the way through to the people asking why I don't print in resin. I do want to cover all of these topics, and I'm sure that I will in time, but there are dozens of different video ideas surrounding FDM printed miniatures and, well I just need to start with one. So today we're going to be starting off by painting up four FDM minis, to see what techniques work really good on FDM models and what ones maybe don't work so well. Before we pull out the speed paints and get started, I wanted to cover why these miniatures are printed in FDM, and why I have such an interest in this topic. For those who don't know me, hi, I'm Jacob from Painted for Combat, and I can't resin print right now. I live in a very small apartment, with not enough room or ventilation to safely be able to resin print miniatures. I have a very limited amount of spare space, a tiny little patch of my desk in front of my computer which sits right next to a window that doesn't open. So if I actually want to partake in my hobby of printing miniatures, it has to be in a non-toxic material, like PLA on an FDM printer. Enter my Neptune 3 Pro. Aside from a 0.2mm nozzle that I covered in my last video, this is a completely stock printer. It's a cheap enough, reliable, hobby level printer that has printed me some awesome miniatures, including everything that you're going to see on the painting table today. Now that that's out of the way, let's get started. I'm going to be blunt, I don't like painting Space Marines with speed paints. I find that they tend to pull and create blobs on large flat surfaces like Space Marine armor. And sure, contrast paints or other speed paints might be better, but Army Painter 2.0 is what I've got, so that's what we're going to be using today. And besides, what I'm trying to test here isn't whether or not you can paint Space Marines with speed paints, it's whether or not you can paint FDM miniatures with them. More specifically, I want to see if speed paints pull out the layer lines of an FDM print, and whether or not speed paints look better or worse than some of the other painting methods we're going to be using today. Given that we're also going to be painting a space bear today, I reckon we'll stick with our theme of reds, and paint these terminators up as blood angels. For the speed paint test, I have gone for a full white undercoat. No xenothal, no dry brush, just pure speed paints over white for this test. For the main body, I'm using Slaughter Red, which, as I'm using it, feels a little bit more temperamental than some of the other speed paint colours I've used. So already, I'm starting to think that maybe some speed paint colours will yield slightly different results. A generous layer of red goes all over our Terminator, making sure to apply enough paint to get the speed paint effect of darkening the recesses and highlighting the edges. Then it's just a case of picking out some of the other areas on the model, more red and some black speed paint for the shield, as well as picking out some areas with pallid bone and broadsword silver respectively. Having a few different colours of speed paint on this model will also give us a nice look at how different colours might accentuate more layer lines than others. Lastly, a thinned down brown speed paint goes over the base details before I come in and reapply a white base coat for the eyes, followed by an orc green speed paint. Overall, this paint job looks decent. The speed paints have exaggerated the layer lines we could already see, but hasn't pulled out any additional information that we couldn't. And I do love speed paints for more busy models. A lot of my D&D and fantasy miniatures are painted with speed paints, but as usual, I'm getting a bit of pooling here or there on the model. And perhaps a different colour or slightly thinning the speed paints would alleviate this problem, but I think this is a pretty fair test. All that to say that if your print already has visible layer lines after priming, speed paints are likely going to accentuate, exaggerate those, but it doesn't look like it will pull out a bunch of additional information you couldn't already see. And with that we move on to... Dry brushing is one of my favourite methods for painting up any miniatures that have a somewhat gritty aesthetic, and even though I've only ever really used it on my D&D miniatures, I do think it'll be a pretty great match for the grimdark aesthetic of Space Marines. My only concern is that just by the nature of dry brushing will probably make all those subtle layer lines much more noticeable. But let's jump in and actually give it a go before we make that call. For this red dry brushing I'm going to be working up from a black base coat. This will give me some darkness in the shadow areas where the dry brush doesn't end up reaching. Let's start out with an all over first coat with some basilisk red mixed with a little bit of black, and also a bit of mephiston red. I like adding a bit of mephiston red to my army painter reds from the mega set, 
They're all cold reds and often look more pink than red next to other red paints. So mixing in a little Mephiston brings some of that warmth back. With that initial darker base done, I'll come in now with a second layer. Now just pure Mephiston red. This will act as our mid-tone for the armor. For the red dry brushing, I'm hitting the entire model. Any black or metallic details I can fix up with a base coat after the fact. 90% of our model is just red armor, so we'll worry about that first, rather than trying to leave all these tiny details untouched. For the final layer of dry brushing, I mix in some Army Painter Pure Red to my Mephiston Midtone and hit all of the top facing areas, but I also make sure to nick some of those more pronounced edges, such as the sharp corners of the shoulder pads or the leg armor. This gives us a bit of a built in edge highlight and helps give some nice separation to the various panels. And even without any extra details, this is looking awesome. Sure, a few layer lines have been made visible, but I do think that we are seeing significantly less visible layer lines than on the speed paint, and also getting what, in my opinion, is a much better paint job. Overall, I'm feeling much better about this model than the speed paint, so I'm gonna come in with a black base coat on the gun and some of the other details, before another dry brush of some silver on those areas. And while the silver is on my palette, I'll quickly base coat the other metallic details, such as the Aquila and the leg piston thingies. And because dry brushing for the eyes doesn't really make sense, a simple dot of green was added and highlighted into the eyes. Because of how nice I thought this model was looking, I did indulge myself with a quick 30 seconds worth of edge highlighting on some of the areas of the model, just to push it that little bit further, which I'm super glad I did. After a simple brown base coat on the base, followed by a dry brush of a warm brown to bring out those details, this second Terminator was done. I'll be honest, I was fully expecting the dry brush to look terrible. I was assuming that the dry brush would pull out an ungodly amount of layer lines that I couldn't see on the raw print, but actually I think it looks really damn good. We have some great contrast by the nature of the dry brush only hitting top facing surfaces, and it's only pulled a very minuscule amount of layer lines to the surface. With that said, is there maybe another method that could give us the same effect with a much smoother application, not picking up any of those layer lines? Hey, if you've made it this far in the video, please do consider dropping a like down below and leaving any old comment before you leave, even if all you're doing is saying hi. It lets YouTube know that you like what you're watching and makes it far more likely for me to show up on your page again in the future. All right, back to it. Now, for me, airbrushing is a method that I only ever consider if I'm priming, base coating, or varnishing 10, 20 models at once. The whole rigmarole of thinning, cleaning, changing paints, it's really only worth it to me if I'm painting a ton of models. But let's say you were painting 10, 20, 30 FDM miniatures, maybe this would be the best method. Let's take a look. For my colors, I started out trying to follow the same steps as my dry brushed model. However, I ended up having to deviate for reasons we'll see soon. I started out with our first layer of that slightly darkened basilisk red. I tried to apply this selectively to maintain a similar level of contrast to our dry brushed model, but that ended up being hard. In order to get a full base coat down, most of the model ended up being hit. This is something you could fix with a darker first coat and more selective highlights, but we're here now. I then moved up to our Mephiston red layer and started adding in a zenithal-esque highlight, hitting just the top faces, but also lightly tapping some other choice areas. And already by this point I was starting to feel a lack of contrast, and without the ability to get much brighter in my red tones, I added some ice white and bright orange to my mix. I used this highlight on the areas I wanted to be brightest, to create a bit more difference in tone between the shadows and highlights. This worked great, but definitely made the model more orange. I decided the quick fix to this, since we were already using the airbrush, was a quick once over with a very thin coat of some red ink or thin speed paint just with the intent to tint the finish back to a richer red. This ended up doing a great job of pulling it back to look more similar to the dry brushed model, but we were still seeing a bit less contrast in the recesses. However, it does appear that the airbrush has left those layer lines completely alone, and we're not seeing as many showing through in the paint job. At this point, I was still a little annoyed at how flat this model was looking, so I put some dark purple ink into my airbrush and very carefully and selectively shot this at the model from below, just to add a little bit of shadow back in on the undersides. After all, it's the small finishing touches like this, adding depth or interest where the airbrush can really shine. 
And on the topic of making the airbrush shine, I wanted to make the most of it. So I opted for an airbrush finished power sword. Masking off half the blade at a time and creating that classic checkered blue and white gradient along the blade. The painter's tape I used did pull a little bit of paint off the underside of the blade, but we don't need to talk about that. Finally, another quick base coat of black went on the gun and some of those other details, followed by a quick silver on all of the aforementioned silver details. And save for a little bit of dry brushing on the base, this model was done. This by far took the longest to get one model painted. But let's say you were painting 10, 20, 30 miniatures, this would absolutely be the fastest method. And in terms of layer lines, this is by far the cleanest paint job we've done. It's given us good shadows and highlights without pulling all of that layer line information to the forefront. And the lack of contrast that we're seeing on this miniature is more my poor paint choice than the actual tool itself. I could have and should have mixed a little bit more black or a darker red into my initial base coat and then been more selective with my highlights, but that's all just good to know for next time. Overall, this looks fantastic, and would probably be the speediest option for painting up a full army of FDM miniatures, if that's what you are after. But what if your model isn't like these marines? What if they're not 90% one colour? Well, let's take a look at- A little bit different from the Terminators we've been painting so far, I wanted to paint up the Space Bear that I've printed with my 0.2mm nozzle, so that I can compare it to the same miniature that I printed with a 0.4mm nozzle some time back. The one printed with the 0.4mm nozzle had a lot of rounded edges and softened details, so I wanted to see if there was a noticeable difference in the painting and final look of the one printed with our 0.2mm nozzle. I left this model with just the primer, Rust-Oleum Grey. Up to this point everything has been primed with this same rattle can and then base coated with the airbrush to get my starting black or white base coat. However, here I clearly didn't think that far ahead, and, and this is the layering test anyway, so let's just layer on our black base coat. I grabbed a big brush and thinned down my black so that I could do a couple of quick and heavy layers of thin paint, without being too worried about globbing up the details. I then started to pick out some areas of colour, starting with our red armour using that same dark red mix of Basilisk and Mephiston, followed by a base coat of all of the browns of the furred collar and loincloth with some oak brown, before going in and adding some highlights to both, pure Mephiston red and onyx skin respectively. The metals got a very simple base coat with either greedy gold or plate mail metal. Greedy gold did require a few coats over the black, but we got there in the end. Next up, I came in with some highlights with a dark grey to add some edges and definition to the blacks of the armour. The eyes got a base coat of armour fist and red from earlier with a small dot of bright orange, and this marine was done. I kept this simple. I could have pushed the highlights much further and done a much more in-depth paint job, but I wanted a direct comparison to my 0.4mm nozzle version. And we're seeing a lot more detail here. The shapes of the helmet are much clearer and more crisp. The edges of the armour panels and all of the small indentations across the miniature are much more defined. But more important than that, painting this was just more fun than the other one. Rather than working around areas that were lacking detail, or trying to fill in shapes that had gotten lost in the print, everything that I wanted to paint here was here to paint. I'm talking about the details on the helmet, the recesses and individual links of the chain, the recesses that separate the furs from the armour. The 0.2mm nozzle print just made for a better painting experience. And here's a couple of other minis that I printed with my 0.2 nozzle that I've painted up for my D&D games a summoned earth elemental and a tiefling druid of flowers. Both of which are painted with a layering and glazing style like I would with any plastic or resin mini, and they were super fun to paint as well, I didn't feel held back by the fact that they were FDM prints. In fact I'm halfway through painting the bloody magpie captain that we printed up in a previous video, painting it to a slightly higher level than some of the miniatures you've seen here, and, and I'm having a lot of fun painting them up using the exact same methods that I would on any other model. Overall, I think the biggest thing I've learned here is that as long as your printer is tuned in and you're not seeing too many layer lines on your raw prints, you're not really limited by what techniques you can use to paint them. Sure, methods like speed paints and dry brushing are going to pick up those layer lines that are already visible. But if you've got your printer tuned in and you're printing with a 0.2 nozzle, honestly, these layer lines are quite minimal. And no, these are not display level prints. Frankly, I don't think FDM will ever get to that stage. I'm not kidding myself here. But for people like me who for one reason or another can't print in resin, or the 9 out of 10 gamers that just want to have some fun putting paint on a model, it's perfectly fine. 
I mean hell, I had a lot of fun painting these models, and I plan to print a lot more very soon. Quickly jumping back to the topic of tuning your printer, I do hope to do a full video covering my new print settings in Orca with the Point 0.2 nozzle very soon, so do stay tuned for that. And I have a bunch of other fun stuff in the works. You'll be seeing the Space Bears again very soon, but not printed by me, and perhaps in resin. So with all that said, consider liking and commenting on this video to keep me on your homepage, and subscribe to stay up to date. But most importantly, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one.